figure 6.62 uh, is our sheet metal part. Maybe a little bit early to talk about sheet metal, but we can go ahead and go through the process, and if you need it, you have it available. And so this is a module that's embedded in SolidWorks, and it's going to have tools related to um, to the bins and all of the uh, the geometry that we're creating with the sheet metal. So I'm looking for a profile based on the dimensions, 22 from the edge, 95 from the outside, and then probably another 22 over here. Looks like I'm going to be drawing this outside profile, and then the module will come up with uh, the offsets and the material thickness that we need. So the, um, the question is, do I want one of the ends to be at the origin, or try to place it at the middle? I think the uh, the end's probably going to be as easy. We have a stock thickness of 3 and a radius of 3 on all of the bends. That means that the inside's going to be a little bit tight, and we'll have to uh, to see what those, um, those come up to. It's putting, as we make the bends, we're putting in the uh, the interior in a lot of compression, the exterior in a lot of tension, and uh, we're going to talk about the uh, the K values where those uh, balance out. So let's fly this out of the way, and we'll start our sketch. This is another metric part, and we'll set the front plane and open a sketch, starting with a roughly 22. And that creates my my shape. I'm not worried about the uh, the sharps in the corner. The um, the sheet metal module will take care of those for me. We have 95 across the top. And if that reverses, I'm just going to right click, go back to the select, and again, I'm just um, going to be at the uh, the 22. So it's not specifically called out at 22, so um, also we had the 143, so maybe that's a better way to go. So since it didn't come out to 143, we're going to make that driven, and I know that I put in an equal, and shouldn't have, and the 22 is not going to work for me. So we have to build these numbers back. So 22 the um, the driven dimension of 139 I'm going to uncheck its value and that's going to bring it back to where I can update it otherwise it's going to tell me it's a driven dimension can't be changed all right so that makes sense um, you know looking through all these numbers sometimes they're hard to interpret you're going to go with uh, your information but watch out for those assumptions uh, of uh, what we're expecting uh, expecting this to be. So on the right side we have 41 but that's to the bottom of the part and we're drawing at the top so I really need to subtract that three millimeter th thickness and come up with 38 from the inside corner to the uh, to the top. Yeah. And that's looking pretty good. We'll go into, oh, I was going to say we'll go into sheet metal, but I haven't activated it yet. So right click, go into the tabs, and we're going to come down to sheet metal. And once the sheet metal is active, this is going to be a base flange tab. So when we bring the part out, uh, let's see, that, that will work. We're going to go 32 millimeters. And this is a brass piece, so I don't really have a, um, a K value for it. Thickness is 3 millimeters, and the bend radius will be 3. And based on what they're, uh, what they're showing, all bends radius of 3, it showed it to the outside. So that's one of those we'd, we'd have to check on the, the value. But if we go with the, uh, the material... Uh, that's less likely to, to tear or fracture as uh, as we're making the um, making the part making all of those bends. All right, so the K factor is where those uh, stresses kind of equalize, and it varies from material to material. 
And as we're making these bends, the material is going to shrink or stretch depending on uh, what we're uh, what we're doing to it. And so we want those uh, those stresses that when all of this is laid out, it takes some of those um, those stresses into account. So. 0.3 is kind of a good starting point. Very few materials are going to stay halfway. The, the compression is usually the, um, the, the higher stress. So we're going to shift to the, uh, to the center line. If I can find the, um, um, the, uh, the video explaining all of that, I will, uh, I will attach it, post it, link to it. All right, so that gives me my, my flange. And then the um, the rest of the geometry, we need to kind of determine what's going on. We have 22 to the center, uh, six back to the edge. So it looks like those are going to come up. So this piece comes over and out, and this comes over and out, and then that kind of uh, bends in. So based on that dimension everything's kind of coming from here so we can do an edge flange and we'll bring those geometries out of uh, on that uh, on that face so if I pick and we'll need to see what we get but that one's coming towards me and I want to pull it down all right and then if I edit the flange profile and one of the things that will pop up is the profile sketch is valid. Kind of like the converting entities, except I lost my perspective here, so I'm going to go back to the isometric view. So kind of like the uh, convert entities, I can grab those endpoints, even though they are uh, defined and in black, uh, and pull pull that geometry back from uh, from those edges. So since we have a vertical... I'm going to bring this over 19 millimeters from the edge and we have uh, kind of a weird stack up here. Um, let's see, 8 on the, well we're going to end up doing math so I'm going to go ahead and pick and so if I need to do the math we have 19 plus eight and then hopefully there's a gap somewhere I'm really not seeing that gap if we have to work backwards that's going to be a little difficult plus 13 uh, plus 19 And then um, kind of the, the difficulty is just not seeing the 19, oh, the 21. So instead of 13, we'll go 21. But I still need a number in here. Okay, so we're going to have to let that one go and get it close. And then when I start building it out, we'll uh, adjust accordingly. I could also... Um, now, if we bring that out to 75, I could build in a value and then uh, try and make that work. All right, so to the uh, to the outside, we have the 32 and then to the 44, so that would be a distance of 12. So when we um, start to adjust for the, uh, the flange, and um, what do we have for our depth? This is coming off of the inside edge. We have a total of 51 from the top, so it looks like it's going to be 48. We're going to have to measure quite a few of these to, to make this work. And I'm going to finish. Oh, didn't I wanted to go back. I didn't want to finish. So when you finish, it completes the edge flange. I'm just going to right-click, edit the feature. It takes me back into the parameters. We edited the flange to get that basic shape. And then I have a 90 degree. And I want to... Material inside, material outside, bend outside, bend from virtual sharp or tangent to bend. So if we bend from outside, then the offset should be available. And our outside distance, we said was 12. So let's see, I'm not, not by tens. We're not gonna not gonna go. So 
I'll do 12 and then that should be um, that should be pretty good all right and then the uh, the last of the uh, the bins we'll do one more edge flange and that will come inside all right and I'm gonna jump down and that dimension is from so if we go material inside and then I go back up and edit the flange profile. It's going to move around again. All right, so we're looking at it from the bottom once I get my perspective back. And that's going to be the inside. All right, so from the outside bin to the flange is going to be 30. And the width is 19. And we'll see what that uh, that looks like. All right, so this time I'm going to hit back, and that'll take me into the um, into the parameters. Uh, one more quick check um, for the reliefs. Well, we're going to end up removing a lot of that material, so we'll see what it gives for the uh, for the relief. But since it's on the outside, uh, that went up to 57, so we added quite a bit to uh, to that geometry if we're going to keep those 3 millimeters. But that makes sense. I was looking for 51. There's 3 millimeters there, 3 millimeters there. So that takes it up to 57. All right, so if I go back to the other flange, look for my 48. And we go to 42. Rebuild to make sure the geometry updates because I was not editing parameters. Now I have the 51. And because that's to the outside, we have the, the 30. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We still, uh, still have some things we need to work on. So isometric. I think I'm going to go ahead and save this one since um, it's being uh, so much fun. I definitely would not want to start over at this point. And this is the holder clip. All right, so now we have in our tools the ability to unfold. The difference between the unfold and the flatten is flattened is in the manufacturing state. And unfold just says we're going to uh, take all of those bins out so that we can add additional geometry. So that's going to be the face that's stationary. And then when I tell it to unfold, I'm going to collect all bins. So everything's going to get unfolded, even though I pretty much only need this outside. And when we go that way, let me do the rollback, see what I told it. Nope, I sure did. I put the, um, I put that, uh, edge flange on the wrong side. So let's go back and edit the sketch. And that's kind of the problem with it being upside down is it's sometimes difficult to, to see what's going on. So I'm going to take the coincident off. Let's see if we can just grab that one and move it. All right, so bring that over coincident. Probably didn't need that other coincident, but go back to the isometric, go ahead and accept, and I've made the change. All right, we roll forward. And we get to the uh, the unfold. There is my geometry. And so let's take a look at this interior shape and where it is uh, being produced from. So I'm going to open up a sketch on the uh, the top, and we'll see if we can uh, figure this out as we go. So I know that's going to come up over back down, over, a little bit of an angle, and then back to the edge. So that's the material that I want to remove yeah, in the, you know, as it's relieved in the flatten. That being the edge, we're going to bring that back a little bit, start adding our dimensions. So six millimeters, and this is taking a little bit of visualization that when this leg is kicked out, we're going to have this shape, and I have too much here. Yep, still have too much there. So I didn't include, uh, include that in the mix. 
So I'll need to come back for that one. And this would be some place where I would potentially use the split entities because I don't want to, haven't really applied any dimensions yet, but I don't really want to lose any of the relations. That one went to a midpoint. So now let's go ahead and see if it picked it up. Notice how that went to black. That was not my intention. So if I do a control Z or I delete the relation, go back to coincident, set horizontal. Now let's uh, make you vertical. Oh, it's going to move around a little bit, and yeah, let's go ahead and finish out the lines. So depending on the complexity, sometimes I'll draw everything and work it uh, work it back, or we just go through the uh, through the process and draw a little bit at a time. All right, so the width on that one was eight, and from the edge was 19 plus um, from the bin. So if that's the top of the bin, I'm going to take my best guess and measure it out later. So the 19, working backwards, we have, well, we should be 19 on this one. So if I highlight the edge, 19 millimeters, put the dimension in, we have 21 from that edge to there. and I still don't see that gap. All right, so it looks like I also made, I did not include a flat there. So that being the case, I have the split entities. Again, if you come up and type in SP, there is uh, the split entities or under tools, all the way down to sketch tools and then you'll find it. It's a little harder to go that way. So I've added this to my heads up because I like using it. And so if I split that, I take the collinear off, I go back and make it horizontal. That seems way more complicated than deleting that line and drawing those two line segments in, but it's what you see when you see it. All right, so 10 millimeters. On the other uh, depth, we have 30 degrees on the angle, and I grabbed a midpoint there, so I got to be careful with that. Did an escape, which let me out of the last um, last segment, and the bottoms of those two are collinear. So the bottom of that tab and the bottom of that will make collinear. And then 13 from the edge. Then that pretty much leaves. Let's see, do we have a depth? No, there's six there. So if I hadn't set that to 75 and guessed it, a six millimeter or eight millimeter, whatever I told it gap, I really can't verify that from this drawing. It's a missing dimension. And what I always say about missing dimensions is that you are the designer, you get to decide. If it's um, uh, something that's uh, critical, it will show up in the uh, the assembly, and whatever is sliding in there won't fit, we'll be able to go back and correct it. All right, so extrude cut. We'll link to thickness, so whatever the thickness is, that will remove our material. All right, so we have some checking, and then we have the um, the whole locations. All right, so to fold this back up, I want to do everything that I really need in the uh, the folded state. If there's more geometry, anything that crosses over the bins, any additional items, now's the time to do it. Or we do the rollback and do it in the folded state. As a general rule, I only do one unfold. And uh, I think the software, when I was doing a lot of sheet metal on a regular basis, the SolidWorks is only going to let you do one unfold. So when we fold this back up, if we decide we need more geometry, then we will go back and insert it into this between the fold and, or between the unfold and the fold. All right, let's see how we did. We go from the, um, 
the bottom face up to the top face and I got 18.87 so not quite pretty close within our rounding maybe <laughs> uh, we had 51 on the overall and um, the rest of our geometry so really out of uh, out of that group if I look at that sketch I'm gonna I'm gonna guess and if we go up to point three rebuild so I think part of that is a function of the K value and the bins oh, that went too far so I'll back it off and I'm looking just to get it close so there's other ways to produce this uh, this flange I was going with the kind of the easiest fold unfold 19.07 and I may need to uh, to draw that geometry in separate and then extend this off as a separate flange if I really need to control that a lot tighter did I not rebuild thought I changed it nope guess not All right, so that's going to be kind of a kind of a pain to go that way, but we'll get it close. And um, all right, we're within half a millimeter, which is or 0.05 millimeters, which is about four thousandths. I'm going to call it good for now, and if I uh, find there's a problem with it, I'll I'll pick a different strategy. But once we pick a strategy, we're going to kind of work with it. I could refine those uh, back a little bit more if I needed to. Let's see, I'm trying to go into the um, to the radiuses, and I'm not ready for radiuses yet. All right, so sketch. And maybe this one I'll go control 6, so we're looking at it from the bottom. And the hole. And I missed that one, but that is an 8 millimeter. And we'll go 10 off the edge. And inside, oh, it lines up with the 22. So I guess I need the 22 first. So let's go ahead and exit that sketch. And I'll look at it from the from the top. We can do the rollback again. So that I can open up a sketch on the, um, on the top face, get that hole positioned. So 22 millimeters off of the back. Uh, 29 millimeters from the edge and it always um, raises a red flag whenever I'm dimensioning off those uh, those radiuses making sure that I picked the correct corner All right, so the 29 looks pretty good now oh, that's going to be interesting maybe that hole positions the orientation hmm okay we'll see how we did because that doesn't quite look like it's going to uh, to line up. All right, the top is for 13. So double check my numbers real quick. 29 off the edge, 29 off, 22 off the back. Extrude cut. We're going to give it a um, uh, length of thickness. So go through. And that doesn't quite look like it lines up. So something in our numbers. Let's see, did we end up at 44? Or did the radius sneak up on me again and I ended up at 47? No, I ended up at 50. Hmm. Alright, so let's go back to the edge flange. And we did 12 as our extension did not include the three well we had 50 and I needed 44 so let's just try the six I'm doing math in my head again so that just means we're gonna get in trouble all right 44 and when I look at it from the top control 5 then that comes into contact all right rolling forward again I can edit the sketch 
and the 10 millimeters off the edge, uh, that doesn't uh, that doesn't help me anymore. So if I go with the circle and the circle, since those are concentric, that ties in, and then this is going to be an extrude cut, length to thickness, and the hole location in relation to that edge. Uh, let's see, minus six. Let's uh, do it with the surfaces. All right, so we'll go back over to evaluate, go into measure from the center. Well, that happens to be 10 millimeters, so my guess was pretty good. If that was off, we'd come back and we would adjust the length of that flange so that it would uh, it would match. All right, our radiuses. Um, interior radiuses are 2, so I'm going to click hit the fillet, set to two millimeters, and then when I pick the next interior, I'm gonna watch. So, nope, that one's not gonna work, that one's not gonna work, and I, as I go through each of these, well, considering how much it's picking, I uh, don't see any on the uh, the outside edges. Yeah, I'm just not picking up just the, uh, the interiors, so I may have to go back and select manually. So this is one of those situations that um, all of those uh, those selections aren't really helping me. I don't know that it's going to be easier to deselect all of those than to go ahead and select. Alright, so interior. And we come back and an interior. An interior and an interior. So when we flatten this, we'll be able to kind of check against our numbers that all of those were put in. And then fillet of seven. And accept. All right, am I missing anything? And let's go ahead and save that again. Looks uh, looks pretty good on our geometry. The the whole edge is being uh, being shown there, so I'm going to hide that, clean up the the drawing a little bit. All right. So the main difference between the fold unfold is that when we come over to or the fold unfold and the flatten is that when I flatten this, it's going to show me the bend lines. It's going to show me the envelope of the uh, the part, and um, I'm going to see it in in the flattened state. So if we save this out. This would go out to the um, uh, to the punch, to the laser, to the water jet, to the plasma, whatever we're cutting with, and uh, be the uh, the geometry. And then we'd have to do some test bends and see how how close and how much uh, tolerance we need to apply for this. So the flatten, we don't want to include any of this uh, cutout geometry after the flatten because it's acting as a suppression state. And will ultimately be a configuration. And so when we suppress the uh, the flatten, go back into this bent state, anything that is included in the flatten goes away or is suppressed. Still, still there, but uh, not not usable um, in this uh, folded state. So we'll stay with the fold, unfold, and fold, and use the flatten to generate our patterns in the drawing. And our last bit of information we need to apply is the material. So I'm going to edit the material since brass is not showing up. I'll right click. Um, again, you kind of have to know some of the properties of materials or memorize where some of these are at. The uh, the brass is under the copper alloy. When we apply it, it's going to change colors and that's going to be our, uh, our mass. But let's go back into that material real quick. And from the brass, this is also what's going to give us our uh, our strengths, our elastic, you know, the the basic properties of the material that it's going to use in any type of sim uh, that SolidWorks is going to use in any kind of simulation. And um, in the uh, in the uh, the mass of the um, of the part.